our next type of naming um, deals with having a metal, but this time there's a transition metal. Now the transition metals we know are kind of odd ducts because they can have various uh, numbers of valence electrons that are involved in bonding, so they have various types of charges that they can form. So we're going to need to be specific here to deal with what we're talking about. So things like copper one versus copper two. We saw that in the flame test lab. We're going to have to be specific with these things because they have different properties. We saw that one was kind of a light green color, another one was more of a turquoise color, and they gave different flame tests because of where their electrons are. So we call these type two binary ionic compounds. They're almost exactly the same as type 1, except that we use a Roman numeral to indicate the actual charge of that transition metal. So we need to know these Roman numerals. Remember 1 is, looks like an I, 2 looks like two I's, so on and so forth. You need to know at least through number 6, VI. We need to uh, do a couple of things. One, if we know the name, we can write the symbol, and we use the crisscross method of the charges to figure that out. So, if I have iron four chloride, that means that the four is the charge of the ion. So I could write it out, Fe four plus, and then chloride is chlorine um, in an ionic compound, and if we look at the periodic table, it's in the 17th column, um, so it has a one negative charge. It's a halogen. It just needs one electron to be like argon, its nearest uh, noble gas. So uh, it has a one negative charge. Well, then I crisscross those to get a neutral compound, and I get FeCl4. So I have four chlorines around one iron. Copper two oxide um, means that I have a two plus charge of copper, and oxygen is a two negative. It's a non-metal in the 16th column. It needs to gain two electrons to be like its nearest noble gas, which is neon. Um, so it gains those two electrons, it becomes a two negative. I crisscross those, and I get Cu2O2. That's kind of clunky. So whenever I have the same number, they cancel each other out. So I find the lowest common factor and I get CuO, copper two oxide, I would write as a symbol form of CuO. Okay, now writing the name from the symbol, we do the reverse crisscross to figure out what the original charge of the cation, transition metal, was. That way I can write that Roman numeral. So if I have ZnCl2, I put that two up with the zinc. There's a one behind the zinc, it goes up to the chlorine. So I get Zn2 plus Cl1 negative. Remember the non-metals are always gonna be negative. And now I check. I check to see if chlorine is going to just gain one electron. And sure enough, it is. It's a halogen, just needs to gain one electron to be like argon, it's nearest noble gas, so one negative charge. So now I know that I have zinc and I have chloride, and I know that my Roman numeral will be two. It's that charge there of the zinc. So zinc, Roman numeral two, chloride. Let's look at iron, Fe, oxide, but it's a transition metal. So is it a metal? Yes. Is it a transition metal? Yes. So I need to figure out what its charge is. So I do my reverse crisscross. I get Fe1 plus O1 negative, but then I look at oxygen on the periodic table. It's in the 16th column. It's not a halogen. So that means that it needs to gain two electrons, which means I must have had them cancel out to the lowest common denominator. So I really have Fe2 plus O2 negative. Now my oxygen is what it should be from the periodic table, and my iron cancels out with it, Fe2+. So I get iron 2 oxide.